from NBC 25 in Flint, this is MidMichigan Now. Michigan Senate today approved a proposal to temporarily suspend the state's 27 cent a gallon gas tax, money that the state uses to fund road improvements. The move comes after the U.S. hit an all-time record high gas price last week. Our political reporter Rachel Louise Just tells us why even with the passage, though, you won't be seeing relief at the pump anytime soon. The majority of members elected and serving me haven't voted therefore the bill's passed. Nearly along party lines, the Michigan Senate voted to suspend Michigan's gas tax for six months amid rising prices. I cannot wait to finally put a stake in the heart of sales tax on gas. The bill could cost the state $725 million in funding for roads, according to a House fiscal analysis. I mean, sometimes I wonder if the folks who propose these things are like actually driving on the same roads that the rest of us are, or maybe you already have those hovercrafts that don't seem to exist yet. Republican leaders say they'll backfill the lost income with surplus money. We could have done today if they were going to do that. We, did, we didn't, so it wasn't in the bill. Democrats offered five amendments, including upping penalties on gas stations for price gouging and tying the bill to no-fault auto insurance reform. The amendment has failed. Republicans unanimously voted down all amendments. Governor Gretchen Whitmer has signaled she'll veto the bill, saying she'll provide relief to Michiganders through other proposals. She's also supported a federal gas tax moratorium. If it's important enough to make the FEF ask a Fed to do it, it must be important enough to do here. No matter what Whitmer does, Michiganders won't see savings from the legislation for a while. Lawmakers pass the bill without immediate effect. That means even if the governor signs it, changes wouldn't go into effect until next year. As lawmakers debate a bill that's essentially dead on arrival on Whitmer's desk and wouldn't even save people money for months, Michiganders continue to pay the price at the pumps. I don't go anywhere hardly. I, I, I sit at home because the gas prices has eaten up my account. The first words out of my mouth were, holy cow, when I got to put $95 in my truck. In Lansing, Rachel Louise Just. Not long ago, Governor Gretchen Whitmer released a statement that says in part, Governor Whitmer is ready to take action to immediately lower costs and put more money back in people's pockets. Unfortunately, the bill that passed the legislature wouldn't even reduce the price of gas until next year at the earliest. Michiganders can't wait until next year. And the high gas prices, they're making it significantly more difficult for the budgets for fire departments, too, right now. The Mount Morris Township Fire Department chief spoke with us, Rick Johnson, and says they're not getting a break at the pump. They pay what we pay. He says it takes about 60 gallons to fill up one fire truck, costing about $300 per truck. With the rise in prices for gas, he says he has beefed up his budget for gas by 4%. The fire department, our average was about $15,000 per year just for our three fire departments. And we've, I've increased that up to $18,000. The chief says many of his employees use their own personal vehicles too when they respond to calls, costing them more money too at the fire department. Rideshare company Lyft says it's planning to add a small fee on rides due to these rising gas prices, joining Uber now and adding a fuel surcharge. Lyft hasn't said how much the surcharge will be or when it will go into effect. Uber's fee starts tomorrow, charging riders an additional 45 to 55 cents per trip and an extra 35 to 45 cents per delivery, even if the driver has an electric vehicle. Rideshare drivers, though, are independent contractors and they cover their own gas costs. Let's get a live look here into downtown Flint tonight from high atop the Durant Luxury Apartments there through our mid-Michigan now Skynet camera. And not a bad view, actually, I think, on this Tuesday evening for us. Let's send things over to Chief Meteorologist Ahmed Badji. Hey, Ahmed. Hey, yeah, as we go further on into the night, we've got some clearing skies in a few spots to help us out by tomorrow morning. That's where the cloud cover is going to be in a bit of a fight with the sunshine. Here's what we've got outside your window to begin. 47 with a good amount of sunshine down in the Flint area. 39 in Midland, down to Saginaw as well. 43 in West Branch as we go further on into our evening. Sunset tonight is mainly closer to about 740, so we're doing just fine. Winds on the light to calm side. They will be calm overnight tonight. So not a whole lot of wind for us to have to worry about even as we cool down. Low 30s for the Flint area by tomorrow morning with mostly clear to partly cloudy skies overnight. We head for the Saginaw area, the Old Town area. Low 30s there as well. Partly cloudy to mostly clear. Not 
bad at all. Now, as we get further into tomorrow, we get a chance to warm. We're headed for the 50s by lunchtime, the 60s after that. Now, not everybody makes it to the 60s. The worst spots, or the coolest, I should say, are really going to be around 55. That's the coolest we have for tomorrow. So that is just fine in the tips of the thumb and all the way up into our northern counties. We get dry air building past that. Now, what you get moving further forward is somewhat of a rainy Friday, but check out Thursday. We're going to break down those numbers and your St. Patrick's Day very mild forecast coming up. Russia has circulated a proposed UN Security Council resolution today. The resolution calls for protection for civilians in vulnerable situations in Ukraine and safe passage for humanitarian aid and people who are seeking to leave the country. It makes no mention of Russia's responsibility for the war. A vote could take place tomorrow. Meanwhile, Vladimir Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, acknowledged today his country cannot join NATO. He said it's a truth they must recognize. He spoke to representatives of the Joint Expeditionary Force, the JEF. It's led by the UK, made up of eight partner nations, including non-NATO members, Finland and Sweden. Zelensky told them the Russian propaganda keeps saying Ukraine is only the beginning of the war. We, we all are the targets of Russia and everything will go against Europe if Ukraine won't stand. So I would like to ask you to help yourself by helping us. Zelensky continued his push for more warplanes and said together they can stop the killing of people and the destruction of democracy. Zelensky will also be delivering a speech to members of Congress tomorrow in the U.S. Today, though, he addressed Canada's parliament and got a standing ovation. Vladimir Zelensky urged the prime minister and lawmakers to help enact a no-fly zone over Ukraine and for greater sanctions and pressure on Russia. He asked them to imagine what it's like to live in his country right now. Justin, can you imagine hearing you, your children, hear all these severe explosions, bombing of airport, bombing of Ottawa airport, cruise missiles are being falling down on your terrain, and your children are asking you what happened? Zelensky said the Russian war is designed to annihilate Ukraine and subjugate its people. He thanked the Canadians for their practical support but also urge them not to stop, but rather to expand their efforts. A Senate panel will vote soon on establishing a task force to investigate the United States' response to the pandemic. The legislation is bipartisan, but each party has a different probe in mind, especially ahead of midterm elections. Democrats are pushing to investigate the Trump administration's handling of the pandemic. Republicans want to look into the origins of COVID and if federal agencies funded dangerous research. Advocates who lost loved ones of COVID-19 want to focus on lessons learned. Whenever the U.S. federal health emergency lifts, it is going to have a big impact on people who have Medicaid. Millions of low-income Americans, including children, could fall off Medicaid once that emergency ends. The federal government did give states extra money to help pay for Medicaid, but states had to promise to keep those recipients on the program as long as the emergency lasted. Now, more than two years later, Medicaid caseloads have gone up and states will have to reassess once the emergency does lift. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden just signed a $1.5 trillion government funding bill into law. This measure funds the government through the current fiscal year, which ends in September. It's about five months behind schedule. It includes $13 billion in additional military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. Today, we're again showing the American people that as a country, we can come together as Democrats, Republicans, and Independents and do big things. The bill does not include COVID-19 funding. The White House says it's urgently needed. That will impact claims for uninsured people and also have cuts there to antibody and antiviral treatment allocations. The bill also includes parts of what Biden calls his unity agenda, funding to fight the opioid epidemic and ramp up mental health services nationwide. Police in Flint are investigating a stabbing. That it happened, they say, just before 8.30 yesterday morning on Avon Park Drive near Lapeer and Court Streets. Officers found a 33-year-old man with several stab wounds. They also found a woman with an injury to her face. Both were told by police were taken to the hospital to be treated. Police are telling us that the two are in a relationship and they assaulted one another. 
Anyone with additional information, though, that you think could help investigators are urged to contact Flint Police, or you can do it anonymously through Crime Stoppers. A car dealership in Saginaw is dealing with a significant amount of catalytic converters being stolen right off of its lot. Lease and Leave Car Dealership, formerly known as Butterfield's car, Used Cars, claims it's had 28 thefts right off its lot in the last six months. The most recent one happening just a few weeks ago. The manager says he's paying out of pocket too for these parts, even though he has insurance and it's impacting his business. It's affecting it drastically. When you sit there and look at especially how the economy is and everything that we're going through here, you know it's hard. You know, it's real hard. And, you know, we have staff that we have to pay. And a lot of this right here, you know, it makes it hard for us to have to pay, do payroll, you know, and take care of everything because that's out-of-pocket expenses. The company has turned their surveillance footage over to Bridgeport Township Police in hopes of catching the culprits. We'll have more on this story coming up at 10 and 11 back here on Mid Michigan Now. New concerns over a variant spreading in China and Germany. What does it mean for all of us in the United States? I'm Liz Bonus. We're already tracking it in wastewater. We explain what you need to know just ahead. And a forecast with warmth on the way. But will that lucky forecast hold on the other side of St. Patrick's Day? We'll show you coming up. And then coming up tonight on NBC 25 for you, Young Rock at 8, Mr. Mayor at 8.30. This is us at 9, and the thing about Pam at 10. And then, of course, join me and Ahmed. We're back for you with Mid Michigan now at 11. The cases of that newer BA2 COVID-19 variant could be on the rise. As medical reporter Liz Bonus explains, it's not just what's being tracked in the U.S. that's raising alarm, but also halfway around the world. Hey there, everybody. The concern over this BA2 variant continues to rise. Already it's been tracked in other countries and in the U.S. in wastewater. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says nearly 40% of wastewater sampling sites reported at least some level of increase over the past 15 days, more than twice what it was a month ago. So that means it checks uh, for SARS-CoV-2 RNA. Dr. Steve Fagan says not every reporting system can track variants and wastewater data cannot estimate the number of cases in a community. But monitoring this kind of data can serve as an early warning sign of increased transmission, often detecting increased infections days before positive case counts. And you get a subjective, so it's going up, it's coming down kind of thing. Well, the CDC here says this newer BA2 variant only appears to account for about 10% of all new cases in the United States. We're seeing improvements not only in our inpatient census, but our ICU uh, case rates drop dramatically as well. As it's what's happening in both China and Germany right now that has infectious disease specialists on high alert. China now reports its worst outbreak in two years. It has placed more than 17 million people on lockdown for at least a week. Reuters reports cases there now top 9,000. This compared to only 8,300 in all of 2021. In Germany, coronavirus infection rates hit a record for the third straight day. Daily deaths there, according to the health minister, are still up to 300 per day. It is reportedly the BA2 variant spreading there, which does appear to be more contagious than the original Omicron variant. Dr. Thomas Lamar says while deaths from the Omicron variant do appear to be anywhere from 15 to 20 percent lower at least compared to Delta, he suggests in the U.S. you ask about the newest COVID-19 program, Test to Treat. It allows for immediate use of the newer COVID-19 antiviral medications in those at high risk for complications as soon as a positive test is confirmed. Now, a reminder, you do need to get those treatments within the first few days of diagnosis. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Chief Meteorologist Ahmed Badji will have your storm ready forecast for you in just 15 seconds. Mike Young's in Franklin has new 2022 Buick and GMC models in stock and ready for delivery. We also have another 200 vehicles in our order bank that can be reserved. Stop in today and put an order in, or let's reserve yours only at Mike Young Buick, GMC, and Frankenmuth. Now, your certified storm ready weather. Good evening, everybody. Thanks again for joining us tonight as we head toward a very mild Wednesday and an even warmer St. Patrick's Day. 
is with thoughts and your window as we go further into tonight. Flint, our Skynet camera, the sun is out. That is beautiful. It's a little cool in a couple of spots, but still doing all right. 46 is what it is right now in Flint. Upper 30s throughout parts of the Bay Region into the thumb as well. Cooler air coming off the bay, coming off the lake. But that breeze is calming as we go further on into tonight. 45 in West Branch and low 40s off to the northwest. As we go into tomorrow, what we have in store here is warmth. Low 60s, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Honestly, I think some of the models are overdoing the cloud cover a bit, which is why we can push an extra degree or two into the low 60s there. In the thumb, mid 50s, trying to go a little warmer. We've got the partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies, easily holding on again to a bit more in the way of that uh, warmth, even with the cool air coming off the water. Tri-Cities, Western Counties will make it to 58 by 6 o'clock in areas like Bay City, Midland, over toward Mount Pleasant. But we have a chance to make it to 60 from Saginaw to St. Charles, Chesney, Ashley, Ithaca. Further down to the south you are, the more likely it is you'll break that mark. Up to the north, northern counties, right around the mid-50s, will be at 55 right there by 6 o'clock. Remember, sunset is at about 740 now. So we've got a good amount of time for us to enjoy that day. But starting off in the upper 20s, making it to 45 by noon, that is a climb. So get ready for, if you're somebody that where the sinuses kind of... Uh, you know, don't do so well when we have that rapid warm and cold and warm and cold. That's the type of scenario here over the next couple days, unfortunately. That's the one downside to the warmth that we have. Notice we do build some cloud cover as we head toward the morning, but we break it apart through the afternoon. And you know you see those little green spots, right? It's not a signal on the model for rain. What that tells me is we do have some moisture in pockets for the clouds to get maybe a poofier, yes, scientific term, poofier cumulus cloud or two for us. It's not some big widespread blanket, but we are going to get some clouds that still mix in. It's not blue sky all day, nor is it an overcast one. But enjoy the day, because we do have a breeze that will allow us to feel a little cooler, especially up here, right off of the lake, over toward areas like Oscoda and Taos. That's where some cool air off the water is definitely going to make itself known going into Thursday. But the rest of the area has a chance to truly warm a bit as we go further into it. Now, for Friday morning, this is why we were saying we're not done with the snow just yet. We're going to have a couple of flakes that mix in there as we go into the very start of the day on Friday. We then transition into just rainfall throughout the rest of the day Friday with air cooling from the 40s heading all the way down a little bit further as we head toward a uh, somewhat cool Saturday as well. But that's the thing. We're still in the 40s there as we go further forward. So over the next seven days, we've got the 60s as well, holding on Thursday with the warmest air there as well. We might need to pop that 63 up a little bit, as a matter of fact. We drop all day from the 49 mark down. We begin spring on a sunny Sunday with the mid-50s, and we head for warmth in the 50s still through the start of next week with another round of rain on Tuesday. I'm just happy for some 60s. So am I. Admittedly, I'm kind of excited for that warmth. But, I mean, we've had snow all the way through the April. We've had snow even into the beginning of May before. Right, so we're, we're not happy done for yet. a second. Just, we had that moment. All right, <laughs> Focus okay. on the positive. All right. Well, you know, speaking of that pot of gold there on the forecast, Pat, St. Patrick's Day is coming up, right? We're going to talk about how a northern Michigan restaurant is planning to celebrate. How they're thinking that they can uh, break a Guinness World Record, too. Find out next. This St. Patrick's Day, a Northern Michigan restaurant will attempt to break a Guinness World Record. Hofro Steakhouse that's in Interlochen plans to break the record for the world's largest Irish coffee. It's a feat that the owner and his son, they've been preparing for this for more than a year. A large custom-made mug will hold 550 gallons of Irish coffee. The mixing of the ingredients, that will start at 4 p.m. Well, we want to set the Guinness World Book of Records. The current record is 350 gallons. We're making a world's Irish coffee for 550 gallons. Irish coffee is Irish whiskey, and we partnered up with Higher Grounds Trading Company for the coffee, uh, cream, and brown sugar. And if you're wondering how much they need of those ingredients to make this coffee, 69 gallons of cream and whiskey, 412 gallons of coffee, and a whopping 190 pounds of brown sugar. That's got to be a lot of calories. All right, here's a look at what is trending right now if you head to midmichigannow.com. Also, today's headlines are always scrolling there at the bottom of your screen along with your local forecast.
story here. This picture sent to us from Sharon Morford of her dog, Dusty. She said he just got done getting groomed and is just enjoying his new toy there. Oh, you got a treat too. We're going to get, that looks like a good pup right there though. And who doesn't love that after getting a good grooming? All right, thanks for sending in your pup for us, Sharon. We'd love to see your pictures and videos at midmichigannow.com. Click the chime in gallery and you might see him on TV. I don't get a toy after I get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> goals right there, goals. Trying to keep these things tamed. I feel like I deserve a toy. Okay, anyway. yeah, that, that probably does deserve something. <laughs> as we go further into the forecast, anyway, never thought we were going to talk about eyebrows tonight, did you? Now, as we go further <laughs> into tomorrow morning, we do have some 30s on the way, partly cloudy skies, but we get sunshine going through the afternoon. Highs uh -huh. jumping up into the low 60s. At the worst, we're in the 50s, mid 50s, around parts of the uh, area closer to the water. Wind not coming off the lake tomorrow, but it does shift a bit as we go into St. Patrick's Day. Warmer air there for areas inland. It looks great, even with the clouds that we have along with it. Watch for rain to return on Friday. We'll start off as a mix, and then we're back to the warmth on the first day of spring on Sunday. I will give it to you, though. The waxing of eyebrows, it's brutal. Yeah, it doesn't feel great. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us here tonight at 6. And Nightly News is next. Amit and I, we're back tonight at 11.